May audible, please confirm. I will wait for another two minutes. Please join fast to the live. We are going to discuss some very important concepts in the today's session, which are uh, inflation in capital budgeting. And after that, the decision tree question also we are going to solve. So, so many controversial issues in capital budgeting. I am going to discuss in the today's session. So, please join live fast. I will wait for two more minutes. Please join. Please share this video to your friends now such that they can also join the live. Please join fast. We'll start with the session. One more minute, I will join live. We'll start with inflation in capital budget. Very good evening everyone. So today in this session we are going to discuss about some very very important issues relating to advanced capital budgeting as a chapter which includes topics related to inflation in capital budgeting. Yesterday I gave you a basic introduction as to what does it mean. I will recap again the concept. Okay. Once after that we are going to do 
one problem on inflation after that we will be moving on to the next areas okay target for the today's session is we should understand in and out about the concept of inflation and i am telling you if at all a hard question has to come in examination that will be definitely coming only from the inflation and decision making in the decision tree model yesterday we have seen replacement concept replacement concept la nothing great in that just we need to understand that some number of years of information of a machine will be given their inflows and outflows we need to write separately after that we have to take out okay after calculating the inflows and outflows in a sheet we are then going to apply the pv factors on that and calculate the npv respectively npv directly should not be taken because those npvs are not belonging to one life all the three are belonging to three different lives so we will convert that into equated per annum basis equated per annum basis therefore divided by years we should not take divided by present value of years we should take because the npv is a present value number okay npv in the numerator is not the direct cash flow total it is a total of discounted cash flow life also you should take discounted life in the denominator this is what i explained okay that's why i said to explain that i need to go back to the entire inter capital budgeting and explain life disparity i can't explain all those things in the class therefore i said please refer the notes directly am i clear so this is the thing that i explained in the last class now in the today's session we are going to have a full length discussion on inflation in capital budgeting what is the concept inflation in capital budgeting let's begin first of all all the participants in live put up a message shall we continue So all those who joined live put up a message shall we start and my kind request to everyone please share this video with your friends such that they can also join the live and complete so share it in your uh, uh, friends group or something like that such that everyone will get benefited out of it let's begin see here first point what is the topic we are dealing with inflation in capital budgeting okay inflation in capital budgeting forget about what we discussed in the yesterday's class with a fresh slate of mind let us start with this concept understand it fully do a problem and then close it okay full clarity should be there point number 1 first thing what is a discounting factor what is a discounting factor let us first understand pv factor pv factor is made out of two things what is pv factor discounting factor what is this discounting factor the return which we should ask for putting our cash flows whenever we put a cash flow okay whenever we put some amount in a project we will expect something to be return for us or not how much percentage of return you are expecting return should not be in rupee terms that return should be in the percentage terms okay the return what we are expecting in the percentage terms we call it as a pv factor we call it as what factor sir pv factor okay so pv factor means the return i am expecting how much return you expect i will expect return in two ways i will expect return in two ways basics of fml i told you this afm number 1 i have a opportunity to invest i have a opportunity to invest my money in a bank in a bank safe or unsafe safe fd i wanted to put okay one person came to me one company came to me and said 
Mr. Kaushik Mukesh, don't put money in the bank of D, give it to our company. We will invest in the assets of our company. We will invest in the investments, projects. We will get some return that we will pay to you. I said that, okay, take this money. Now tell me, I am losing an opportunity to invest in a risk-free place and I am putting my money in a risky place or not. That means I am using, I am losing a opportunity to invest in risk-free. That is called as a opportunity cost. That is called as what cost? Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost means what? From a safe place, your money is taking a turn into a unsafe place. From a safe place, you are going to an unsafe place. Because of turning from a safe to unsafe zone, what will happen automatically? You are having a risk. You are having a risk. Next one. Second situation. Not only risk, whenever you put money, okay, for example, I said that I want 10% return. A person gave me 10% for the risk I am taking. Next. When you put money with a bank or when you put money with a company, your money will be blocked with him for one full year or not? Yes or no? For example, I have 1 lakh rupee in my hand here. Yeah. I will buy a laptop. Okay? I want, I, I need a laptop. I wanted to buy. Okay? I am about to buy 1 lakh worth laptop. One person came to me and said, Are Kaushik Mukesh, you are buying a luxury product like laptop. Don't buy laptop. Please give it to me. I am in need. Like that a company asked me. For the company, I gave that 1 lakh. 1 lakh rupee with a 10% interest they gave me back. 10% is for the risk I take. Okay? Over. After one year, okay, risk portion you take it off. For the risk taken, you got 10%, 10,000 rupees. Keep it away. 1 lakh is there in hand. I gave 1 lakh. For the risk I take, you gave me extra 10,000, 1 lakh 10. 10,000 is for risk taken. I keep it away. Again, how much I have in hand? 1 lakh. I took this 1 lakh. I went to the shop. I said, I want laptop. He said, no, no, it is available at 1 lakh 6,000, he said. 1 lakh 6,000. One year back I asked you, you said 1 lakh. Suddenly why it became 1 lakh 6,000? He said, Kaushal Mukesh, you don't know about the concept of inflation. A product which is available at 1 lakh this year may not be available for same 1 lakh after one year. It will increase because India is subjected to 6% inflation on electronics, he said. Oh, oh, that means I should not ask only for compensating the risk. I should also ask for inflation. Okay. So, therefore, what makes a PV factor? Opportunity cost, inflation. Two things creates a PV factor. Clear everyone in the class? This is the first motive of PV factors. Everyone watching live, please put up a message. Understood or not? Up to here. Meanwhile, I will have one Madras coffee. The motivating factor of staying in Chennai. Sambar is the second uh, motivating factor to stay. <laughs> First coffee, second Sambar. Third MS Dhoni. <laughs> Okay, let's begin. Now the question, how the PV factors are made? These are the two things which creates a PV factor. Means, PV factor is made out of two things. Number one, the risk you are taking in the project and the inflation that it particular uh, country has. 
inflation is country specific risk is project specific clarity should be there simply to understand uh, for example india overall will have a inflation okay india overall will have country has inflation okay country will have inflation and moreover project will have risk project will have risk means what for example i wanted to start automobile manufacturing plant whether you start automobile manufacturing plant in hyderabad or you wanted to start in chennai or you want to start in chandigarh wherever you start automobile per se business has a risk okay business has a risk means what automobile is a discretionary commodity portfolio theories and asset pricing models la levered and levered beta la explained you okay so full theory i explained na one hour discussion we made after that we done the problems levered and levered beta same that means try to understand the logic of this finance correctly the problem also with all these things is risk is subjected to project inflation is subjected to country okay both of them put together pv factors are to be taken p factors are to be taken okay now in the questions whatever we have done till now in the questions whatever we have done till now we didn't take inflation separately we didn't analyze separately we didn't analyze okay now first point number 1 in finance there are two concepts discounting compounding compounding you forget about this discounting let us take what is a discounting bringing the future to present bringing the future to present is called as what discounting a new thinking let us understand okay definitely everyone listening to this if you did not take my air from classes or before definitely your mind will be blown after listening to the logic if you already heard this oh maybe this is not a suspense or a surprise okay listen we are going to bring future to present bringing the future to present is the concept of discounting this is what we learn okay we call this time value of money but do you know what is the real intention behind this see here future is uncertain present is certain present is certain i said in future i am going to get say for example in future i am going to get 1 lakh rupees you said you said future la i will get 1 lakh okay future la 1 lakh means future is certain or uncertain or uncertain that means this 1 lakh is having a risk having a risk okay risk percentage will be there or not there will be a percentage of risk or not in this rate what we are doing whenever you are discounting 1 lakh is with the uncertainty inside it remove that uncertainty remove the uncertainty remove the uncertainty means what future if it is becoming present present is always certain future is always uncertain bringing future to present means uncertainty is made certain uncertainty is made certain therefore people will always tell don't add cash flows belonging to two three different periods do you know what is the reason do you know what is the reason because one year after cash flow is uncertain two years after cash flow is much more uncertain three years cash flow is much much more uncertain then how can you add uncertain cash flows and take a uncertain decision therefore bring them into some level of certainty how to bring discount them that's why 1 lakh is subjected to uncertainty i want certain amount for that we will reduce some amount called as discounting we will reduce some amount called as discounting so 1 lakh will become 90900 90900 risk element we removed what i mean element we removed risk element 10% risk element is there we removed that what does it mean what does it mean is this 1 lakh is becoming 90900 technically how to understand 1 lakh is uncertain 90900 is a certain cash flow 
because in this one lakh there is a element of risk that is element of risk that element of risk i removed uncertain has become certain okay 90900 certain second year it will become how much 82640 one lakh after two years is uncertain one lakh after two years is uncertain but 82640 for present is certain okay therefore this is certain these two are uncertain don't add to uncertain cash flow you can add to certain cash flows am i clear or not okay now 10% rate i considered only the risk of the project as a rate inflation also will be there or not now we are going to analyze how to integrate how to integrate risk rate inflation rate and create a pv factor risk rate inflation rate and create a pv factor before going into that first of all again 1 lakh is for future we want present value we have to reduce it we have to reduce it so listen again i am using the language listen carefully that itself is important that's why i am saying so many times 1 lakh will be coming after one year okay 1 lakh will be coming after one year now i want a present value so i have to reduce why reduce 1 lakh is including the risk and uncertainty remove the uncertainty when i remove something value should come down okay therefore whenever you discount something values will come down values will not increase okay discounting reduces the value so you reduce sir you are wrong sir reducing you are telling no sir you should divide okay first point number 1 clarity of thought i will give you an example this students who attended my classes already i explained this but for the new people who are listening also this clarity should be there see here 15 by 3 equal to 5 what does it mean what does it mean okay from 15 from 15 3 should be subtracted Three should be subtracted five times to achieve a remainder zero. To achieve a remainder zero, fifteen minus three minus three minus three minus three minus three equal to zero means fifteen will become zero by deducting three how many times? Five times. Instead of writing. 15 minus 3 minus 3 minus 3 minus 3 minus 3. I can write 15 by 3 equal to 5. Correct? I can tell from 15, 3 has to be reduced 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times to achieve zero. Instead of telling like that, directly I can tell 15 by 3 equal to 5. Correct? Discounting really is subtracting. Eh? 10 years life I gave. 10 times you can't subtract na. That's why we will do F V equal to sorry P V equal to If we divided by one plus r whole power n, you will make. Really, this is not like that. If we minus one plus r, okay, one plus r. After that, again minus, again minus, again minus. Ten years limit. Ten times you have to subtract. Instead of subtracting, we will divide once. Okay, same. Okay. In math, multiplication is called as continuous addition. Okay. division is called as continuous subtraction discounting la value should come down discounting la value should come down okay value should not increase in discounting value should come down with discounting to come down we should subtract add a subtract but life 10 years is a 10 times will you subtract therefore we will do division one time by taking the power la life okay everyone listening live did you understand what i said there is a lot of interlinkage what with what i discussed now so please put a reply did you understand
Okay, let's begin. See here now. So, always discounting is subtraction only. Since I cannot do continuously so many subtractions, we take a division. We take a division. That's why compounding you will multiply because you can't add so many times. So, always remember division is a continuous subtraction. Multiplication is a continuous addition. Okay? Done. Why I am telling all this? You should understand. Before you start doing advanced capital budgeting like inflation area, people should have a clarity of thought. Okay? Number two. Number two. See here. Discounting we have done. Second one. Discounting means we have to deduct. Okay? Deduct with a PV factor. With a PV factor. PV factor is made out of two things. One is a risk element. One is the inflation element. Okay? One is the risk element. One is the inflation element. Okay. First listen. In FM, AFM, any financial management theory, there are three types of cash flows. There are three types of cash flows. First one, money cash flow, real cash flow, Discounted cash flow. Okay. Money cash flow. Real cash flow. Discounted cash flow. This is also called as nominal cash flow. PV rates are also of three types. PV rates are also three types. Rate number one. Inflation rate. Real rate, money rate or nominal rate. This money rate or money cash flow is also called as a monetary rate or monetary cash flow. Means money cash flow. Okay. I will explain what is the meaning. This I explained in international capital budgeting in IFM. Again, I am repeating here. So please concentrate properly. Listen. Money cash flow is a cash flow which is having inflation and risk of the project yesterday i told you Sorry, forget about yesterday i will explain one more time no problem for me first listen inflation and risk both together are there in these cash flows meaning i will explain real cash flow is a cash flow which includes only the cash flow includes only inflation sorry risk inside that means we removed inflation component only risk is there in the cash flow discounted cash flow la, no inflation no risk or no risk no inflation okay just now i told you whenever a discount rate i say discount rate is used to do what to reduce the value to remove something what you will remove with what you will discount that will be removed okay Take a cash flow, hit it with inflation rate, inflation will come out. Hit it with risk rate or real rate, risk will come out. Whatever, listening everyone, so both put together if you have to remove, use money rate directly. Take a cash flow, this cash flow is subjected to inflation, this cash flow is subjected to risk. Remove both of them, first remove inflation. Next to remove real rate or risk. Instead of doing like that, I will merge both of them and create one rate which includes both of them. Once I hit with it, both will come out. Okay? I will explain how it will be. See here. There are three cash flows. Money cash flow. Real cash flow. Discounted cash flow. Okay, first money cash flow discount money cash flow. Money cash flow means contains both inflation and risk inside that. Meaning, I will tell you once we complete this, I should first remove inflation, discount it one by one plus 
IR. Discount money cash flows with 1 by 1 plus IR. Whenever you discount something, that will come out. What will come out now? Inflation comes out. From the cash flow, inflation risk I removed. Now real risk of the project we have to remove. What we have to do? Discount this by 1 by 1 plus RR. Real rate we call. Real rate means the risk rate of the project. Okay. Next. Or instead of bringing money cash flow to real cash flow, real cash flow to discounted cash flow, I can directly take money cash flow to discounted cash flow by dividing it by a rate called as money rate, which contains both inflation and risk. Okay. How to calculate? See here. 1 by 1 plus IR into 1 by 1 plus RR will be equal to 1 by 1 plus MR. Okay. Numerators are same. Equate the denominators. 1 plus IR into 1 plus RR equal to 1 plus MR. Equal to M 1 plus MR. This is the formula. Clear? Huh? So R MR equal to 1 plus IR into 1 plus RR minus 1. Minus 1. This is a formula for calculating what? MR. RR also you can calculate. Okay. How? Oh. 1 plus IR into 1 plus RR equal to 1 plus MR. 1 plus MR divided by 1 plus IR equal to 1 plus RR. RR equal to 1 plus MR by 1 plus IR minus 1. Okay. See the formula what I have written here. Observe them properly. Everyone those in live, please put a message. Understood or not. Shall we continue? If you are okay with the understanding up to here, we will start.
understood the entire logic Next one. Next one. See here. So now we understood the rates. How to calculate real rate? How to calculate money rate? Okay. Now listen carefully to the concept. Now not yet completed. Our discussion is still there. So the point is, whenever a company started a project, whenever a company started a project, it will project. Project cash flows will project the cash flows. How they will project? They will tell this machine. If I purchase here one, two, three, four, five, they said like this. Year one, the sales will be year one sales. So sale price per unit is ten. Sale price per unit is ten. Year one, we assume to sell one lakh units. One lakh into ten, ten lakh. Two lakh units, twenty lakh. Thirty lakh, forty lakh, fifty lakh. Okay. Next, cost. Cost. Five rupees is the all the cost together. Labor, material, everything. Okay. One lakh into five, five lakh, ten lakh. Twenty lakh, twenty-five lakh. So, what is the net revenue because of this machine? Five lakh, ten lakh, fifteen lakh, twenty lakh, twenty-five lakh. Problem now. Okay, these are the revenues. This we call as a cash flow. Then what you will do? Year one, two, three, four, five cash flows. Five lakh, ten lakh, fifteen lakh, twenty lakh. 25 lakh you will write this pv at the rate of pv at the rate of some percentage you will take some percent some 10 15 16 percent you have taken okay you are taking this 16 percent you will apply pv factors to this and we will calculate pvcf some value will come this you call discounted inflow minus discounted outflow npv will be there that will become some positive number you will accept the project. However, now the problem start. However, you started the project on the basis of NPV. You started the project on the basis of NPV. I repeat, you started the project on the basis of positive NPV. You begin the project. First year, everything went as per plan. Let us try to understand. Everything went as per plan. You sold at 10 rupee. You incurred a cost of 5 rupee. You made a profit of 5 lakh. Done. This is correct. Okay. One year after. Cost of product increased. Cost of product increased. Your cost of production from 5 rupee per unit became 7 rupee per unit. Okay. Say example. 7 rupee per unit. Automatically when this becomes 7 rupee per unit, what will happen? 2 lakh units. 7 rupee means it becomes 14 lakh. Immediately your 20 minus 14 will become only 6 lakh. Without inflation, without inflation, it is 6 lakh. It is 6 lakh. But with inflation, it is only, sorry, with inflation, it is only 6 lakh. Without inflation, it is 10 lakh. You took decision on the basis of 10 lakh cash flow. But actually you should take decision on the basis of 6 lakh. On the basis of 6 lakh. So you took a wrong decision now. Therefore, Whenever you consider the cash flows, those cash flows should be considered after taking inflation into consideration. Boost up the prices using inflation along with the cost. Sales price also will increase. Increase sales price. Increase cost. Totally calculate the cash flow. Therefore, this cash flow will be 
after considering risk of the project after considering inflation sir you said only inflation where is the risk here now tell me how many lakh units we sold 1 lakh wrong we are expected to sell means asal our expectation lone there is a probability technically we are expecting that we will sell 1 lakh units we didn't really sell we are <clears throat> we are expecting that we will sell 2 lakh units in the second year we didn't actually sell means there is a risk in my projection or not 1 lakh is certain or uncertain first tell me uncertain 2 lakh units uncertain 3 lakh units uncertain 4 lakh units uncertain 5 lakh units fifth year uncertain everything is uncertain uncertainty has a risk or no risk risk therefore pv factor la first we need to remove that element of risk therefore risk rate we need therefore rr not only rr cash flow should be inclusive of inflation cash flow should be inclusive means what when you take future cash flows add inflation to sales add inflation to cost then calculate the cash flow therefore what will happen these cash flows contain so two things this 5 lakh lot two things are there risk of the project in the number of units sold and there is a inflation element also included in both sales as well as in the cost so this cash flow is with risk with inflation what i said about discounting factor take a cash flow with what you hit that will come out so with inflation rate you hit inflation will come out then the cash flow is with risk without inflation hit with risk real rate risk also will come out that will be you took cash flow with inflation with risk removed inflation and removed risk clarity of thought will be there while calculating npv means we can directly tell to the management sir we considered cash flow with risk element inside it with inflation element inside it after taking out the risk after taking out that inflation this is the npv chances of occurrence will be very high your npv deviation will be very very low that's the idea of inflation in capital budgeting concept first of all everyone give a reply did you understand why this concept of inflation in capital budgeting came ah Okay, done. Next. Next one. So, now it is a time for us to do some problems. Okay, let us do one question and complete the inflation in capital budgeting as a area. Okay, see here. Let us do one illustration. see here i have given full analysis see the screen so capital budgeting whatever i discussed till now okay whatever i discussed till now let me summarize in some time first capital budgeting all about what calculating npv means what you will take future cash flows you will apply discounting rate on that you will calculate pv factor okay next what will happen now till now you are considering the cash flows you are till now whatever the capital budgeting problems we do we considered only cash flows with risk inflation element we don't take therefore we assume that all the pv factors taken till now are rr rates okay and we are removing that pvcf we calculated this key disco npv okay positive npv na accept to negative npv na reject okay but you should understand what is this cash flow sales minus cost sales minus cost here sales means what you are making two estimates sale minus cost is cash flow your cash flow is subjected to two estimates while estimating cash flow we estimate two things volume estimate means number of units projected to be sold cost estimate at what cost we can acquire them both these are guaranteed or unguaranteed or unguaranteed only because all are futuristic how can i tell that how many units i will sell in the next year 
sir can i tell how many afm classes i will sell in the next year this year for example sir as it is now i sold around 1400 classes till now what can i can tell maximum maybe 1400 may reach 1800 1900 to some somewhere around i can tell may happen may not happen it may be lesser than that it may be more than that anything can happen how can i definitely tell definitely 1400 this year na next year 1632 classes how can i tell like that how can i tell like that i can't tell so our volume lone there is an estimate risk is there this is risk cost also is risky because we can't estimate everything today itself okay so sales value sales value number of units sold is projected risky sale price subjected to inflation both put together risk and inflation involved number of units sold we will estimate something this is inflation risk this is a inflation risk project risk project risk maybe we can sell may not be we can sell sale price per unit is a project risk inflation subjected to inflation same this year i can purchase number of units at a particular cost next year cost may increase therefore we will take all at inflation everything see here there are three types of cash flows money cash flow real cash flow discounted cash flow money cash flow loaded with risk inflation real cash flow loaded only with risk discounted cash flow no risk no inflation this is how we calculate okay let us take one example question see here Here. a company has investment proposal of this is a eight marks question already tested in the old attempts when capital budgeting is there therefore i have taken the facts i told na every model first we will do one problem and complete the model later once we complete every model in capital budgeting we will start doing the problems investment proposal how much 8 lakh real cash inflows 2 lakh 80 what do you mean real cash inflow real cash inflow means cash flow which is having risk inside but there is no inflation okay that's why today's purchasing power inflation is not included okay that means everything we are uh, taking as if today's price will be prevailing throughout the 5 years or 6 years life monetary cash to cost of capital means what money rate inflation means what ir mr is given ir is given first he is asking us to calculate rr real cost of capital cost of capital is the rate pv factor okay first step 1 calculation of real rate formula just now i told na 1 plus ir into 1 plus into 1 plus rr equal to 1 plus mr okay So one plus MR divided by one plus IR equal to one plus RR. Okay, RR equal to one plus MR by one plus IR minus one. RR equal to what is the money rate? One point zero nine. What is inflation rate? One point zero three minus one. RR equal to calculate and give me the answer i will write here those who are watching live please respond and respond give the answer i will also do One point zero nine divided by one point zero three two minus one zero point zero five six two. Okay, or you can also write it as five point six two percent. Five point six two percent. Very good. 
people also gave the answer very good participate like that 5.62 percent what is this 5.62 percent this is the real rate this is what rates are real rate okay now real rate we calculated next issue after that what is the second question is asking pv of cash inflows in real terms pv of cash inflow in real term means what he is not asking to remove inflation just to remove the risk and calculate pv fact pv value okay tell me step two real cash flow counting okay here cash flow pv real rate at the rate of pv cf first you answer me 280000 is what 280000 is what it is money cash loan real cash loan disc, uh, disc, uh, money cash loan real cash loan discounted cash loan money cash flow contains risk and inflation real cash flow contain risk of the project discounted cash flow no risk no inflation okay real cash flow means what risk is included i want to remove the risk means what we need to do discount with the risk rate also called as the real rate so first let me write down one small info here life of the project is 4 years life of the project 4 years thing information there the life of the project 4 years now tell me 1 to 4 how much i am expecting real cash flow 2 lakh 80 what is a real rate tell me annuity factor 1 divided by 1.0562 3.495 okay 9 lakh 78730 this is diski minus what is the discounted outflow 8 lakh 1 lakh 78732 will be npv positive pv positive 1 lakh Seventy eight thousand seven thirty two is the NPV positive. See here. One seventy eight seven thirty. We got seven thirty two. They got eight twenty four. Because here, if you observe, they have taken five point six two percent, three point four nine six. Okay, I have taken three point four nine five. Small decimal difference. Okay, so this is one lakh seventy eight thousand seven hundred or eight hundred something. Okay, this is the NPV. what bit we completed second bit we completed third bit compute nominal cash inflow also called as a money cash flow from real cash flows and calculate present value on the basis of nominal cash inflows okay read the question properly what is asking us to calculate first i have given you 280000 real cash flow i have given 280000 real cash flow real cash flow will contain inflation or risk or risk okay see here this is the discounted cash flow discounted means after removing everything including real cash flow will be this much including inflation means this much or inflation cash flow is this much i reduced by real risk it became like this again i reduced the risk it became discounted cash flow he what he is asking in the question calculate money cash flow means nominal cash flow so is not asking 2 like 80 this is discounted this is real this is inflation means we need to add inflation okay 2 like 80 is already including risk now we will add inflation also to that after adding inflation what we will do we will directly take mr rate and apply and remove both inflation and risk at the same time okay see how it look like step 3 calculation of calculation of nominal cash flow here 1 2 3 4 separate line writing for understanding see okay what is the real cash flow 2 lakh 80 2 lakh 80 2 lakh 80 
टू लैक ए इनफ्लेशन इनफ्लेशन अमाउंट अमाउंट इनफ्लेशन अमाउंट ओके हाउ मच इज द इनफ्लेशन रेट वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू इज द इनफ्लेशन ओके वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू मीन्स इफ ए प्रोडक्ट इज अवेलेबल एट टू लैक एटी टूडे दैट विल नॉट बी अवेलेबल एट टू लैक एटी आफ्टर वन इयर टू लैक एटी थाउजेंड इंटू वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू हाउ मच इट विल बिकम टू लैक एटी एट थाउजेंड नाइन सिक्सटी सी हियर इन ए सिंपल लैंग्वेज आई कैन टेल दिस ओके टू लैक वेरी गुड देर इज अः सी हियर थ्री पॉइंट टू परसेंट पर एनम पर एनम इनफ्लेशन ओके दैट वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू शो यू सो टू लैक एटी थाउजेंड बिकेम टू एटी एट नाइन सिक्सटी टू एटी एट नाइन सिक्सटी विल बिकम हाउ मच सेकेंड इयर टू एटी एट नाइन सिक्सटी विल बिकम इन टू वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू टू नाइंटी एट टू नाट सेवन अगेन इन टू वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू थ्री जीरो सेवन सेवन फोर नाइन इंटू वन पॉइंट जीरो थ्री टू थ्री वन सेवन फाइव नाइन सेवन नाउ टेल मी दिस पर्टिकुलर फोर वैल्यूज आर इंक्लूडिंग रिस्क आ इंक्लूडिंग इंफ्लेशन आ इंक्लूडिंग बोथ आ इंक्लूडिंग बोथ ओके दिस इज द मनी कैश लो दिस इज वॉट कैश लो मनी कैश लो ऑलो कॉल इज नॉमिनल कैश लो ओके instead of removing first inflation next to removing real directly mr rate you can use so mr rate what is the money rate given in the question 9% 9% 1 divided by 1.09 0.917 0.84 sorry Point eight four two. Point seven seven two. Point seven zero eight. Two eighty eight nine sixty la. Into point nine one seven. It removes both risk and inflation. Two sixty four nine seventy six. Two ninety eight two zero seven into point eight four two. Two fifty one zero nine zero three not seven seven four nine into point seven seven two two thirty seven five eighty two three seventeen five ninety seven into point seven zero eight two twenty four eight fifty nine MRC nine seventy eight Why not eight? Nine seventy eight. Why not eight? Small difference. Okay, minus eight lakh. One seventy eight. Why not eight? One seventy eight. Seven thirty. Small difference. That is because of these decimals only. Amounts are very big now. That's where the difference. Both sides answer is same. This is called as calculation of nominal cash flows and calculating the discounted cash flows of profit. Okay, this is what the answer I have done. Here also small difference. One seventy eight, one hundred eight, one seventy eight, seven. That depends on the rates you take. This is how the questions will be tested on inflation with capital capacity. More questions also we will do. Model ki first I will do one question and complete the model. Once every model in advanced capital budgeting is completed, na after that we will start doing the problems on the ISM as well. Okay. So this is how inflation in capital budgeting concept has to be dealt with when given in the exams. Okay. First point, everyone, whoever is listening, please confirm. Did you understand or not? You understand, everyone. that's all this is the end of our first area second area in the advanced capital budgeting called as inflation with capital budgeting okay so the entire summary of my discussion is whenever there is a pv factor pv factor includes two things inside it 
one is risk another one is inflation one is risk another one is inflation risk is because of uncertainty of our cash flows inflation will be because of change in the purchasing power okay a product which is available at a particular price today there is no guarantee that it will be available at the same price even after some number of years therefore when you are projecting the cash flows project with risk project also with the inflation and remove risk and remove inflation and show the results then the person who is seeing it will understand okay inflation is also there after considering inflation and after considering risk and after removing inflation after removing the risk these are the npv therefore this npv is mostly certain to happen so there will be a satisfaction in decision making for that concept only all these concepts have come in the in, uh, advanced capital budgeting okay so once you have a clarity on this remaining problems when you do you will feel comfortable okay you will feel what comfortable when you are doing the problems you will have a clarity of thought as to what you are doing okay so this is what i wanted to convey next session we are going to see decision making through decision tree tables okay so daily one concept i will first discuss okay but tomorrow's session will be for two hours session which covers decision tree a very 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 complicated concept in our syllabus okay that i will take a lot of time to explain you should know how the flow of decision tree will go okay or else we can't understand what is happening in the question therefore it takes time i will also take around one and a half to two hours time in the tomorrow session join live and complete the concept okay so thank you very much we'll meet again in the next session